As the saying goes, what you win them with, you have to keep them with. And this pastor says the quiet thing out loud. Um, I don't believe that spirituality by itself can hold the attention of a person's heart to the degree that they can be transformed. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallow be. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome all back to an episode of All Things Theology. With this is your host, K Dub. Today, we're going to talk about Apostle Brian Meadows. Yes, he has been going viral again. I say again because the first time I have heard of him was when he had brought uh, marijuana in the pulpit for, you know, all this was for sermon props. He brought an inappropriate magazine and inappropriate toy. I'll just say it that kids watch this show. But he has been gone viral again. And the sermon props now make sense in light of this statement. So I want to get right into it. Let's talk about it. Um, I know that this may ruffle some feathers, but I really do believe in something that I call spiritual entertainment. Um, I don't believe that spirituality by itself can hold the attention of a person's heart to the degree that they can be transformed. So essentially what he's arguing is, you know, just preaching the text, you know, the gospel life, spirituality, that's all of it. It's insufficient. It's not sufficient to even say it in that way to transform a believer. But they need something else. They need something other than the more sure word as scripture has guaranteed for us to transform their life. You know, the spirit yeah, it's not enough to, to regenerate you and actually keep you. Well, let's hear what he says is actually um you need the plus, right? You need spirituality, right? That's the whole whole of it. God himself, the Bible. Let's see what else you need to endure you. In order for you to hold their attention, you need a level of entertainment. So you need entertainment, you need education, and you need spirituality. So you need ed entertainment, education, and spirituality. But one of the funny things when you listen to his sermons, most of what you get is just entertainment. And so that becomes a priority, you know, and, and, you know, shame on pastors who think that that if they just preach the text, that they'll bore their audience to death. Right. Imagine, you know, this. I mean, what does that say about your audience that you think that if you just preach the Bible, you know, these regenerate, spiritual Christians will will just be bored yawning. But what you really need to get, you know, the, the innovative message of many pastors today, we see it from Mike Todd. Right. What you really need to do is just entertain them. Right. It needs to be a Broadway play. It needs to be like going to the movies. It needs to Disney on ice. Right. And if that isn't happening, you know, the people of God, you can't hold the people of God in, you know, attention. One, I think that's a very low view of the people of God Two, what does that say about our confidence in the word of God? You know, that's what we think that, you know, unless we, we entertain them to death. You know, let me just say this. We got enough entertainment in this world. We, you know, every time you turn your left, turn, turn to the left, turn to the right. There's entertainment being thrown, shoved down your throat. We sometimes we need to put down it all. Get rid. Of, and let me just say this. You, you don't need to smoke machines and stuff in church. I've seen churches where they got to do some big pizzazz, some stage entrance for the people, you know, as they, the pastor thinks that's what's going to get the people interested in the sermon. But all you've done is get the people interested in the entertainment, right? That actually does not help anybody know the Bible more. It doesn't. My my venture would be to, you know, if we were to do a poll in those churches, somehow do a theological test. All these churches that do the prop stuff, give them a basic theological test. And I I am I'm I'm willing to bet some of these churches would be the most theological ignorant people you've ever met but i'm talking a lot i know some people complain when i i'm very in depth but let's keep going here this threefold core cannot be easily broken and i believe that when all three of these components are present and active i believe that the believer i believe that the listener the hearer i believe that anyone that's engaged in these three dynamics all interacting together education entertainment and spirituality i believe that their heart is overwhelmed i believe so if you have these three, it's it's very difficult to 
you know, uh, break this person's uh, faith. Yeah, I think he would uh, agree with that language. Uh, but, you know, one thing that's noted, notice what's missing, it's a lot of him th- talking, given his thoughts with no Bible to back up what he's saying. Because if what he's saying is true, the apostle surely failed, right? The apostle surely failed if what he's saying is true. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Because where did they give this entertainment value to the listener? I mean, you, you, you don't see it. They weren't doing all the shenanigans and bringing inappropriate magazines and nasty toys. You're nasty. You're nasty. They weren't doing all this in the church. Very clear. What, what do they say? Preach the word in season, out of season. Right. Not give them games, give them entertainment, give them foy, give them fun, hype them up on cake and candy, because surely they'll come back if you do a carnival every week. No, that's not the Christian message. We don't do anything that distracts from Christ. We're going to get to that here in a second. But notice he has no Bible reference. No, it's it's all. Well, I just believe this. Well, sir, we don't want your beliefs. As the pastor, you are to, supposed to give the people, thus saith the Lord, right? What he has said, not what, you're, what you think would be better than what God has said. Because that's really what this is. This is really rooted in arrogance. I believe that their uh, spirit is revived. I believe that they're equipped for their destiny and for their assignment. And that's what we hope to accomplish at the Destiny Experience. Well, they may get an experience at your church, but will they get Bible? Because I don't see any of that. And when I say Bible, not just some off scripture, scripture references, I mean in-depth explanation on the word of God. That is found lacking in what I've seen. But Charles Spurgeon uh, was right on the nail when he talked about this point here. He says, a time will come when, when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. And I think Spurgeon, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the prince of preachers himself, was right on the nail when he spoke about this. But this is what the Bible talks about, that men will not endure sound doctrine. This was, you didn't need Spurgeon to know this. The Bible taught this, right? Let, speaking of Bible, I want to get into a passage, man, because I get fired up when I talk about this passage here. Because men's, you know, what is it? Their, their you know, the intellectualness, you know, you know, the intuitiveness, right? They're, they they think God always needs their help, right? They think God really needs them unless, oh, poor God, he won't be able to keep sinners, you know, by the powerful working of the spirit unless i help him god i'm just trying to help you right let's look at the text first corinthians 1 starting at verse 19 says for it is written oh well first of all let's 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 start back up because right i mean listen listen to this verse 17 for christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel you know what god has sent you to do that not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. You know, not with all this entertainment and games and cake and candy and, you know, carnival slides every week down to all these Super Bowl Sunday uh, sermons. And, you know, you got the Easter, uh, you know, hell play. Right. None of that. Because we don't want to empty the cross of its power. We want to preach Christ and him crucified. Right. Matter of fact, that's what Paul says. That was his goal, to preach Christ and him crucified. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. Mm. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hold on, Paul. You didn't know about the three the three chord strain, string, whatever he said, chord. You didn't get your entertainment, education, and your spirituality you got to put in there. Right? Well, Paul said, no. He says, where is the one who was wise? Hmm. Apostle Brian Meadows. First of all, you're not a true apostle. Anyways, where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? See, some of the problem is the church wants to be like the world so bad. You know, the world started doing something. It's like we need to do that in the church. No, we need to be separate from the world. Right. Let's continue on. For since in the wisdom of God. The world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. See, Apostle Brian Meadows needs to read this passage 
Because it's in this, it's in the foolishness of what the world deems is actually the wisdom of God. And in dark, in the in this so-called folly is actually what's saving, right? <laughs> it's saving, it's keeping. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. An apostle Brian Meadows demands entertainment. <laughs> you can add that in there, right? But we preach Christ crucified. The point Paul is making, we don't give them what they want. We don't bow the knee to what the culture says. We give them Christ. We're the stubborn DJ. We got one song. We don't do any remixes here. We do one song as ambassadors of Christ. We deliver the message the king has told us to preach. Amen. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. Our message is folly to those whom God is not saving. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man. It's like even in the foolishness of what the world, it's still wiser. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Right. My goodness, we can literally go, go, go. I do want to read one more passage. It's actually in the next chapter just to speak about this. Right. Um, But notice Paul's aim. And when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. My speech and my message were not implausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power. That your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is a great passage, something you want to commit to memory in this enlightenment age, in this age of, well, well, if we just it's, it's ultimately what he just taught us, what he was just teaching. What many preachers today who have this same methodology, this same ideology is they are not preachers. They're pragmatists. They don't want to deliver what the word of God says. They want to preach their intuity, right? Their their uh, loftiness, their great wisdom, right? And they say, well, this works. This gets people coming to church. So they pack out arenas. They fill stadiums. And they think, oh, well, because a lot of people are coming, therefore, I'm doing what is pleasing to God. No, let us not be pragmatists to think because lots of people are doing it. Therefore, God is pleased. Lots of people are going to hell. Let let me remind you of that fact. A lot of people are doing things God hates. And so we shall not be pragmatists in our message, our Ambition, our goal as the Christian should always be asked, what has God designed for the church laid out in scripture? Again, if a preacher is telling you something like Apostle Brian Meadows to do something and it's not found in the pages of scripture, which it is not, what he said was totally unbiblical. We have no uh, obligation to follow any of what he just said. This man just spewed his pure unbiblical opinion. And to that, we say no. To that, we say even further than that. No, 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 no. We do not want it. We want the word of God, sir. Hope this video was helpful. To the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.